Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. This is how I've been watching the sun for two days. Reverse brightness, looking for flare indicators. We're going to go over space weather, seismic activity, a new space mission, and the top story, once again, tying Earth rotation speed to Earth's magnetic pole shift. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, 195 angstroms from GOES. Very quiet day. Was worried about those polar orbiting astronauts, but the sun has gone quiet. Their space flight ends tomorrow, so only about one more day of worrying about the massive sunspot on the south. But it was actually something else about the sunspots that caught my eye. Veterans, you know sunspot magnetism flips north versus south. Blue positivity, leading on the north. Red negative leading on the south, except for that one top right active region in the southernmost trio. Looks like that one is blue leading, red trailing to the left, a reversed sunspot. The solar pole flip is past the halfway point, meaning solar maximum only has about 6 to 18 months left. We are expecting nominal solar wind for several days with little other than the minor coronal holes here to amplify the stream. The sector boundary magnetic flip at the solar wind should occur within about 36 to 48 hours, but it should be minor. Top quake of the last day continues the days long uptick of magnitude 6 or higher events. This one safely offshore Japan. But a couple weeks ago, we got the 7.7 .7 striking Myanmar. It dropped buildings over a thousand kilometers away and has killed nearly 3,000 people. They say it was a very rare super shear event. In these, the ground motion breaks so dramatically that the energy waves outpace the seismic waves, which caused the extreme devastation we saw in this event. Sadly for them, most of the super shear faults are in this part of the world. Congratulations to the SphereX team on their first light. The initial images from what I think will be as meaningful as James Webb is now live and scoping the heavens. Been waiting a couple years for that. Very excited to see what they can give us. And last but not least, folks, we've covered the few dozen papers on this before. Here it is again, confirming on top of confirmations. The Earth's rotation speed changes with the long-term geomagnetic secular variation. So I'll go ahead and say this again. When they want to tell you that climate change is slowing down Earth's rotation speed, every aspect of that is a lie. We're speeding up. The days grow shorter, which is exactly what happens when the magnetic field is going into its shift phase, like right now. Low field strength, lower length of day, meaning faster speed, and Earth is racing at record spin the last four years as we descend into this magnetic pole shift. Folks, we're ready to kick off the heavy schedule of events at Observer Ranch. Quail Day is less than two weeks away, and then it's a mad dash through data and cycles and special guests and prepping classes and overall disaster readiness. Spots for the grand opening dinners with Dr. Robitaille and myself are filling fast. In addition to nearby hotels, folks, we've got a lot of ways for you to stay at the ranch. Head to ObserverRanch.com for the event list, booking details, and more. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.